Is This a Ghost is sponsored this week by longtime listener and super fan, Bonnie Miller. Oh. Do you want to Bonnie? say some words to Bonnie? Yeah. I, 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 no, I, I want to hear what you have to say about Bonnie first. <laughs> well, Bonnie was so taken with our 10th anniversary message uh uh-huh. for chris and allison who by the way i have i have not heard from Ooh, and it's been weeks <laughs> so i don't think they uh <laughs> that was well received but uh once again no refunds <clears throat> um this is again ladies and gentlemen at home this is why you cash out your venmo account the instant you get money in it you don't uh, let the money 100%. sit in there hundred <laughs> percent the second I get that notification, I don't have mm-hmm. many apps that I let send me notifications. Mm-hmm. Oh, Venmo is the big one because <laughs> I'm taking that money as soon as it hits. Uh, but Bonnie heard that, and uh, unlike uh, Chris and Allison, she loved it. <laughs> and she wow. said, I need to get in on this. And so she has now sponsored an episode. And I said, this is so great. Do you have anything you want to say? And she said, no. Mm-hmm. And I said, can we okay like a hint maybe <laughs> so i said it does help if we can have something to talk about because yeah. we don't we don't we don't know bonnie so right it's hard to, sure hard to extol her virtues other yeah. than she uh she is very free with her money <laughs> uh which we're so grateful for <laughs> Uh, so I asked her, I said, so what do you, you know, is there anything, is there something you plug for you, whatever? She said, mm-hmm. no, I don't, I don't like have any, anything to sell or anything, but she said, but uh, she works for a small community theater. And so she said, uh, mm-hmm. she would like to encourage people just to go out and to donate to your local nonprofits mm-hmm. because uh, you know, it's, there's still, a lot of them are still having a really hard time recovering from, from COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she said, she sent here, uh, put some money in your local community and get involved. I love, really nice. I love that. Nice. I love that. Uh, speaking of someone who has worked in, in theater and performing mm-hmm. arts uh, management for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, I love that. And here's what I found out about Bonnie. So I said, well, where do you work? Because she didn't even say, like, give it to my organization, which right. she works for one. Sure. And uh, but so I said, well, where do you work? And she said she works at a, at a theater company called Richmond Civic Theater, which is in Richmond, Indiana. Oh, okay. Yeah. And always I said, confused. always confused. And I said, hey, I know Richmond, Indiana. How? Because Richmond, that's a great question. <laughs> Richmond, Indiana is where when I was moving from Chicago to near Richmond, Virginia, which mm-hmm. is why I remember the name of the town. Right. Um, I was in the car with our friend Dave and my two mm-hmm. cats and half of my stuff, mm-hmm. uh, half the car transportable stuff, mm-hmm. and our tire blew. Oh, I and remember. It blew this. as we were going on the interstate past Richmond, Indiana. Mm-hmm. And there was a really great set of folks at the tire shop, the R and R tire shop in Richmond, Indiana, who came out to our car, changed the tire because he was like, "We're changing." He goes, "Don't don't worry about changing the tire as we're on the interstate." And I said, "Don't worry, yeah. <laughs> didn't enter my mind." <laughs> Not in the cars. So. <laughs> <laughs> These cars are going super fast. <laughs> I am really scared and mostly useless. <laughs> so so they changed it and they followed us back to their spot. They let us bring, while they worked on the car to get us a brand new tire, and they mm-hmm. actually did all, all the tires for us, uh, they let us bring the cats into the shop. And they're oh, like, wow. it's really hot outside. Bring your cats in. And I said, Damn. thank you so much. They're in a big carrier. They go, oh, even better. Yeah. So I think they were going to just let the cats run around. <laughs> if there's anything cats love more than the uh, air hammer tools of a tire shop, I really can't think of it. I, it's just you almost know. nothing, I'd say. <laughs> it's like the jungle for them. So like, oh, <laughs> finally. So, um, so, they, and they also like drove us to lunch while, while our cars being worked on. It was the wildest experience. You bought lunch though, right? We, yes, we did. And we well, bought, okay, we bought yeah. lunch for, uh, for one of the guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, I, I, that's a really nice, I, if you're going to blow a tire on the, near the, uh, Indiana, Ohio border, try mm-hmm. to position yourself as close to Richmond as mm-hmm. possible because, Great folks. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of those great folks who lives in that town is is Bonnie Miller. Um, mm-hmm. And you should support her theater, Richmond Civic Theater, and and you should support any local theater or local charity that's that's near you. And I thought maybe to help kind of encourage that, Patrick, you could you could do a pitch um, right. of like, you know, uh, just to, to really, I mean, really inspire people, like like channel your like your coach waltz and just mm-hmm. really get people to, to get fired up to give. Like now? Yeah, yeah. Sure. You okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, oh yeah. man. So folks, folks, I know I know times are tough. I mean, well, I mean well, times well, are tough, aren't I mean, they? The, <laughs> I mean the economy is actually doing really well and, and wages <laughs> it's are really at, on the upswing and wages are kind of an all time high and unemployment is just almost zero. Mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. so I guess I guess times times are actually pretty good unless 
unless unless unless you are kind of a crappy community theater then maybe <laughs> maybe times twenty five dollars so you can't call her work crappy no no hers isn't I'm sorry you're talking about you're talking about like like my local oh yeah 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 theater. okay great yeah <laughs> okay this is very yeah. like very local yeah I'm sure Bonnie's is great but you know it probably needs help so you know maybe maybe go there you know bring a uh, five six seven dollars I don't know what it costs you know these things nowadays um <laughs> Buy some popcorn, buy some uh, yeah, popcorn. Probably, I think they do. Uh, or is that like is that not a theater thing? But, you know, buy a beer or a wine. Or have a, you ever like been a, to a community theater? I have no idea I'm what's so, going I'm on. I'm starting I to really, think that maybe you don't like, know what you're talking it's about. It's in like a cafeteria, right? That's uh, that's. The I community. mean, sometimes. Hey, listen, sometimes yes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, really, just uh, no matter how 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 hard life is, there's always time for you to give to you know to buy popcorn. And there Boy, we go. I regret that instantly. <laughs> um, so we're going to cut all that. And uh, listen, hmm. so <laughs> you do Bonnie a favor, do us all a favor, and go support your local your local theater, your local charity. Or if you don't uh, don't want to do the work to find out what the URL is where you would do hmm. that, you could go support Bonnie's Theater, which is at GoRCT.org. Stands for Richmond Civic Theater. GoRTC.org. Go there and throw a few bucks. Even truly, like even like five dollars is hmm. meaningful. It's not hugely meaningful, mm -hmm. but it is some money. And that's nice. If you give $20, you can give $100. You could give, I'll tell you what, Patrick's going to give $1,000. He's going to match up to $1,000. Over time. Right here tonight. Over time. Yes. I mean, it's yeah, a yeah. it's a long time thing. Maybe like it's a dollar, dollar a week for the every next few weeks. weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and eventually that's going to really be something for them. Re yes. So, so go support Bonnie. Go support the Richmond Theater. Go ahead, Patrick. I can't wait to hear the final word on this. Anyone that wants to match my donation of a dollar every few weeks when I find it for the next thousand weeks, I will send you a special email. <laughs> I think we just saved the arts. I, yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Oh, gotta get cracking on my special email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to start writing in the chat while you talk. That sounds great. That's <laughs> just, I'll tell you know what? I'll take care of this episode. You just, okay. um, you just relax. Coast city. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back to, is this a ghost? I'm Clayton Smith. And every single week I tell a real ghost story from real history. to my real friend, Patrick Dean, who doesn't take it real seriously. No, this, this week, especially not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you listened to the intro, uh, the ad break, but <laughs> yeah, especially this week. Uh, what has happened to your basement? There's lots of stuff on your couch. Everything okay? You got a flood? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's best not to ask questions. Yeah. <clears throat> In our house, sometimes the kids' cleaning strategy is take things from a room that dad visits and put them in a room that dad <laughs> doesn't visit. Oh, man. Solid strategy. I think so. I don't know. I mean, for all of JB, uh, JD Vance is a, uh, I don't know, fuck up or he, mm -hmm. I, I still don't know if anything is better than, <laughs> than Jeb Bush's. Please clap. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jeb. Well, it was back in the good old days when you said one stupid thing and you just didn't get to be president anymore. Remember when was... Howard Dean just screamed once and people were like, oh, I don't think so. Oh, that is completely I... <laughs> disqualifying. <laughs> Uh, then of course he did have an affair that was uh, outed. To that that I think that sealed the deal for him. Howard Dean? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Hey, no. John, you talking about John Edwards? Oh, John Edwards. Yeah. Howard Dean was just scream, right? Yeah. Howard Dean yeah, was yeah. literally just scream. Yeah. Just scream. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nope. Sorry, you can't be. You can't be. Can't be on by on the ticket. You're done. You're right. That was John Edwards. Well, that guy real fucked up, huh? Oh man, that guy was like. <laughs> we, we, we you and I were looking at that uh, that list of the most consequential vice presidential nominees ever or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. and like obviously jd vance was the most negatively consequential <laughs> so vp candidate ever and john edwards was the most positively consequential vp candidate ever it's kind of mm -hmm. crazy it uh, is and, crazy and then he uh and then he did the opposite <laughs> you know <laughs> with the uh with the affair yeah yeah and we're anti-affair here on is this a ghost it's strictly yeah, so very, 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 very much so. You okay? Pensive. 
pensive this week. Why are you pensive? I don't know, stomach maybe. Okay. Um, how is your week going? What? It's Monday. It's Monday. We're on a regular night. Thank God that Wednesday business. That's brutal, huh? No thanks. I will say yeah. Jeremy turned around that audio in like thirty six hours. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, as always, to Jeremy Montoya for uh, for just. Just doing such a good job um, for nothing. Mm-hmm. Except for that $50 gift card we gave him that one time. Yeah. That's, that's, that was pretty nice. That was pretty good. I hope he likes but... Crate and Barrel. <laughs> is, there, is, is there like a worse gift card to give somebody than like $15 to Crate and Barrel or like, something thanks. like now that? I, yeah. Now I will spend $98 at Crate yeah. and Barrel. <laughs> this will cost me more money to burn this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, your basement looks pretty furnished by Crate and Barrel, right? How many pieces in your basement are from Crate there and Barrel? Like there are some crates. Yeah, that's a crate. <laughs> there's a barrel there's somewhere. A, there's some barrels in the back, mostly with pickles. Piece of a barrel. Yeah, piece and oh. pieces of barrels. Pickle barrel. Man, I'd pay $98 for a good pickle barrel. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of pickles in a barrel. It is, but you know what? They'll last forever. You pass them down to your grandchildren. <laughs> These are Papa's pickles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How was your weekend? What'd you do? What'd you do this weekend? Went to the old Festival of Nations. Have you been? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. this weekend. Food trucks, right? Well, food stands. But yeah, from uh, yeah. yeah, every kind of uh, ethnic food that St. Louis can uh, produce. Which is actually a, a lot. There's yeah, a lot I of... mean, it's 80 some odd different uh, yeah, countries. All jokes aside. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's like the Epcot Center of, uh, of the Midwest. It really is. St. Louis. Mm-hmm. It absolutely is. Um, Except you can get as drunk as you want, they can't throw you out. So it's pretty cool that way. They could throw you out. (laughs) They could try. (laughs) Um, That's cool. Mm -hmm. What did I do this weekend? Uh, What is today? Today's Monday-ish. Boy, I just, I got to sleep more. I don't know what we did this weekend. But, oh, I I do have a story about uh, tonight. (laughs) So I was doing bed. We're recording a little bit later than uh, than normal because I was doing bedtime because Aaron was out. Um, and so I was, I was all alone. And I put the girls to bed and it all went, it went okay. Mm-hmm. Until uh, a few minutes uh, after Ivy was definitely asleep, Mabel called me into the room. Mm. And so I went in there and I said, what's going on? And she said, Daddy, I'm really scared. And I said, what are you scared of? And she said, I don't know. And I said, okay, well, that doesn't give me a lot to work with, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I said, well, you don't have to be scared because our family has a lot of family magic and mm. we love each other so much that we make this magic and it protects the whole house and mm. nothing scary can get in this house. Right. Yeah. And she said, okay, but a voice in my head keeps telling me that the giant purple fish is going to eat us. <laughs> And and I said, what? (laughs) She said, I know it's not real, but I keep hearing in my head that the giant purple fish is going to eat us all. And I said, huh. Thanks. Now it's in my head. I appreciate that. (laughs) So that's what I'm dealing with uh, Mm -hmm. now, mentally speaking. (laughs) Just God. I don't know. So I think we may actually have a malevolent spirit in our house because that's a very, that's a, that's a specific whisper. Very pointed. Yeah. Very pointed, yeah. very tailored to me mm-hmm. uh, and my biggest fears. Mm-hmm. Color so, purple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. Um, and that stems from watching all those Grimace commercials. Oh, as a young okay. child. Just <laughs> fucking Grimace. <laughs> terrifying. Oh man. <laughs> there was something else I was going to tell you today. What was it? Hmm. Sure, it down. Were you going to comment on um, on the uh, most insane and distasteful political ticket of all time suddenly getting <laughs> a thousand times more insane and politically distasteful? I know what'll solve the weird thing. <laughs> Let's put brain worms on the ticket. <laughs> brain worms, severed whale heads, and dead bear cubs are Man. on the ticket. I don't know why I should be surprised about the severed whale head story, but it's just like, <laughs> God, I think what's, what's more surprising about these things is like, how have we not known this? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, these are years ago. How uh, has this been secret until now? I'm just imagining whatever guy whose job is like, he's the fixer for the Kennedy family. Like the guy that makes sure none of this shit comes out. He is just sitting there at home watching this on TV. Like you, do you, you know how many months of my life? <laughs> We're spent covering up the whalehead story, mopping up 
miles of I ninety four. God, the girl and the whole story is like, yeah. I guess they interviewed Kick, and she was like, yeah. every time they accelerated, the whale juice yes. escaped. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ! What uh, if these are the things that are like surfacing? What yeah. are they actually working yeah. hard to keep suppressed? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost like he's just like in public therapy right now. Like I can just say anything, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you can, I guess. Oh, I'm so happy. This is a safe, safe spot to talk about this. Oh, well, good oh. for him. I'm glad he's getting it all off his yeah. chest. <laughs> Boy. I don't know. I, I don't know whether he, well, I guess yeah, the, the whalehead story didn't come out from him. That was, that was from Kick, his daughter. Um, oh, she is the one who, who yes, shared yeah, it? She, yeah, she was the one who okay. shared that story. I was, I was, I was wondering who he was doing a podcast with this time that he decided to tell the whalehead story. <laughs> Who else is a terrible yeah. person who was uh, made less terrible by this yeah. reveal of an RFK? Uh, anyway, I was just saying that it makes sense because uh, Kick has been in the news lately as being seen with Ben Affleck. Sure. Uh, so now she's the villain. She's like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta change the headline, and I know just how to do it. <sighs> well, that's not what I wanted to share, and I'll I'll think of it by the time we're done with this episode for sure, and um, we'll bring it up. I don't know in three weeks. In the meantime, do you want to hear a ghost story? Love to. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry. Pause it. Pause the fucking thing. Pause uh, yeah, it. pause it. How many of the Abraham Lincoln You Are Not a Fish <laughs> shirts have we sold so far? I will say this. It's not like if you're, if you, we're going to pull back the, the curtain a little bit on, on Is This a Ghost? Um, mm. We're not as popular as a show as you might think we are. <laughs> and so when I say that in the first 18 hours, we've sold six shirts. Mm-hmm. You, it might not sound like very many. That's as many shirts as I have. It's so like that. <laughs> so many. <laughs> it is, I mean, by far outpacing any other shirt we've ever had. Uh, it's a good one. It's a good one. And one of our listeners just uh, sent us a message. Did I send you the message, that the email that I got Mm-mm. from a listener who bought three shirts? <laughs> <laughs> like within three hours of the shirt being released, she bought three shirts. And it's because she she had that day been in the car with two of her colleagues and they mm-hmm. live, she actually lives in, in Virginia hmm. and she works at a museum and they were on their way uh, to the beach, I think, for just uh, to hang out. And they were, one of her friends was telling her about the story of uh, the hiccup in the You Were right. Not a Fish. Now, I don't know if that's because the friend listens to, because this is not a person I've heard from before. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the friend listens to us or that was just happenstance that she also <laughs> heard right. that you could tell people they're not a fish. <laughs> But she was like, and then like half hour later, I saw this. So I obviously bought three and everyone gets one. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, I, we keep, we know we're really pushing the envelope on, <laughs> on esoteric shirts. <laughs> and this is truly, this is, I, 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 I say this every time, but I think this is the best one yet. It's the esotericist. I will say that. It much. is the esotericist for sure. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, go to the website, go to our store. Um, it's, uh, it is, it, it invokes the, the Uncle Sam, I want you for the U.S. Army, except mm-hmm. it is, uh, it is Abraham Lincoln in Uncle Sam gear, except his shirt is open and he's just, Obviously. he is yeah. ripped. He oh. is ripped to hell and says, you are not a fish. <laughs> and, and it's really good. <laughs> uh, uh, Yes, thank you for reminding me uh, that we need to shamelessly plug that because it is the best thing we've ever done, <laughs> including the podcast itself. It's better than that. <laughs> uh, all right, now are you ready to hear a ghost story? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah play, play it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the wrong button. I, no, that's fine. <laughs> I like that button more, actually. So Oliver Hazard Perry Belmont. Oof. <laughs> was born on November 12th, 1858 in New York, New York. Ooh. What's your favorite part of New York? You've been there a few times. Ooh, man. Um, the most comfortable part of New York is the gutter. That's my favorite. That's where I like to just kind of take a... Just lean back on the trash. Take <laughs> the a few... Stacks of trash. And just... just take a few minutes to myself. <laughs> gather my senses. <laughs> No one bothers me there. <laughs> no one bothers me down in the gutter. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite place. Uh, second favorite, second favorite 
is, mm-hmm. sw- is swimming at Coney Island. That's my second oh, favorite place. Oh, man. <laughs> it is so cold there and so brown. Oh, and my I goodness. I don't know why. It is. Yeah, it is not a color I, I realize ocean water could become. <laughs> it is. It's the closest uh, body of water I could, uh, I could, I could name color wise is I guess the Mississippi. It is very, it is very rivery. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't think is yeah. how oceans are supposed to be. <laughs> uh, Coney Island is, is the best. I mean, the freak show must still be there. Has to be. I mean, where else would they go? That's, that's true. This is the last bastion. <laughs> it's there or it's nowhere. Remember when, uh, when Millie and I lived out there for that summer and we made friends with Eek the Geek? I do. God, that was a that was a summer, huh? Mm-hmm. And then he would like walk up with us after the shows out on the pier and read us some poetry. <laughs> <laughs> life is life is an adventure, huh? Mm. Anyway, so that's where Oliver Hazard Perry Belmont was born in 1858. Now Oliver's father, August Belmont, he was a Hessian Jew who came to the U.S. in 1837 as an agent for the Rothschilds. Hmm. So this is definitely going to sound racist, (laughs) but uh, it's just true that as such, he, quote, accumulated enormous personal wealth. Mm -hmm. Someone has to accumulate it. Yeah, someone's got to buy the first space laser. (laughs) And it's going to be August Belmont. (laughs) So when I say that he acquired enormous wealth, uh, I would like to illustrate just how enormous um, that wealth was with a fun fact. Wham! You've probably heard of the Triple Crown horse races. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you oh, name yeah. the three races in the Triple Crown? Uh, Belmont, Preakness, and Kentucky Derby. Very good. Who do you think oh. the Belmont Stakes is named after? Uh, Ricky Belmont. So close. So close. <laughs> <laughs> you got one of the names right. You're 50, okay, 50, okay. 50%. It's named for August Belmont, for Oliver's oh. father. Uh, now, Oliver's mother, August's wife, obviously, mm-hmm. was uh, Caroline Slidell. She was the daughter of Commodore Matthew Perry. (laughs) Anyway, this Perry was famous for commanding the naval expedition that opened Japan. Oh, hey. In 1853. Historically locked up tight. Uh Mm Uh-huh. I've seen that movie with Tom Cruise called, what is it? Last Samurai. I've Mm -hmm. seen that movie. I know all about how white people ruined yet another country. (laughs) Hey, can we come over here? I really don't think it's such a good idea. <laughs> it's going to be great. Just trust us. <laughs> uh, even though he lived in New York, Oliver attended school in Concord, New Hampshire. I assume this is like a classic boarding school mm-hmm. thing. At the age of 14, he enrolled in the U.S. Naval Academy. He graduated from there one year late and near the bottom of his class. <laughs> <laughs> But well, you know what they call the uh, the person who graduates bottom of their class in uh, medical school? They doctor. call them doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was, of course, commissioned uh, mm-hmm. as an officer, but he was commissioned as a midshipman, which is the lowest rank of officer in the Navy. <laughs> you don't get to be in the front, and you definitely don't get to be in the back. You're in the middle <laughs> somewhere. You know, uh, uh, take care of middle stuff. Middle, you're, you're pretty mid. This is yeah. actually where mid comes from. Mm. <laughs> That one's for all our Gen Z listeners. Uh, so he's he's a midshipman, but then he resigns after one year. No. Oh. So he's he's very smart, very driven, and mm-hmm. very interested in work. It's what we've learned about Oliver. In 1882, Oliver meets Sarah Swan Whiting. Oh. Now she's a popular socialite. And without telling his parents, he proposes marriage to her. Hmm. Okay. You ever think about like, I hate to tell you this, but Mm. uh, Stella's getting, I wouldn't say she's not at marrying age quite yet. Right. She's a child. So I would say no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, hey, in some states, she's pretty close. In Missouri. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you get it. Yeah. We're one of those horrible states. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think you've ever, I, I assume you probably haven't thought about this yet, but um, mm-hmm. what do you, do you have any opinions on like, if she came home and was like, I'm marrying this guy mm-hmm. and you had never met this person, mm-hmm. would that bother you or you think you'd be okay? Oh uh, boy. I don't know. Does it mean she's moving? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, okay. So. All right. So that's something in the little throw bit, column. A little bit goes in that dish. <laughs> a few little weights go in that dish. All right. 
Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Why well, I, I, I raised her to make good decisions. I'll put it that way. Wow, that's a that's a that's a nice save. Now that <clears throat> sounds like a shitty decision, admittedly, <laughs> but <laughs> but maybe it's a really good shitty decision. Yeah, I don't know. Also, compared to some of your decisions, maybe it's a good one. We don't know. We don't yep. know your life. Mm-hmm. Um, if she if she was like, uh, I'm gonna marry this guy who has unimaginable wealth, I'd be like, that's great. I'm coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> I will take care of the pool or whatever he <laughs> needs me to do, and that's fine. I am not good at groundskeeping, yeah. but I will try. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um so where are we here so now his parents were not they were not on board Mm -hmm. um they didn't think he was and it's not because they didn't know the know her it was because Mm -hmm. they didn't think he was mature enough for marriage (laughs) he had a bit of a gambling issue uh Mm. he seemed to like the drink a little too much and was Mm -hmm. just generally not very good at stuff yeah the midshipman thing kind of yeah yeah i included that to really set a tone I'm glad you're picking up on. So the parents, so his parents break, they break up the engagement the best way that they could. They send Oliver to Germany to, (laughs) so that he can learn banking from the Rothschild family. Mm -hmm. Um, So he goes to Germany, but while in Germany, Oliver becomes quote dissipated, which is not a term I was familiar with. I'm, I'm very unfamiliar. It means overindulgent in sensual pleasure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, one of those sensual pleasures is that he develops a pretty serious absinthe habit. Oh, okay. And this is 19th century absinthe. Mm-hmm. So Which it's like the real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pure it's wormwood. Yeah. Definite green fairy territory. Yeah. Absolutely. Not just like vodka with blue food dye in it. Like it is nowadays. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey, did I ever tell you the story about the the time I I almost got myself in trouble with uh with the pleasures of Germany? No, but uh, on behalf of our listening public, yeah. I would love to hear it. So it's hard to explain. In some countries of the world, Germany being one of them, you don't make eye contact with people. You just don't. Like like what about when you're talking to them? When you talk to them, yes, absolutely. But with people on the street. Oh, like, so you don't do like the walk past and nod and say, right. Hello. That's, you, that's, you don't do that. That's not a thing that you do. Okay. Um, so you're from as the Midwest. Mid- I'm from the Midwest. I say hello to everybody. Yeah. Right. So me and some colleagues, when I, I was over there for work, you know, some years ago, me and some colleagues are getting some street food late at night. Um, donor kebabs. Donor kebabs, of course. <sighs> Unbelievable. Mm. And, um, and I'm just, you know, like, you know, eating my street food, you know, bobbing my head on the sidewalk, looking around, whatever. And I see someone looking at me and I kind of, you know, look back at this. It, it's a woman. She's looking at me and I was like, oh, she must think I'm some sort of weirdo. So I, you know, make eye contact and smile and nod my head and go back to eating my food. And then I glance over again and this person's walking towards me. Oh, think, no. Oh, oh, this no. is why you don't make eye contact. This is <laughs> now I get it. And of course, all of my friends or all my colleagues <laughs> Uh, they're looking at this woman walking towards us and they know that this woman is not a friend <laughs> of any of us. And they're like, we need to leave now because you have just attempted to engage with somebody <laughs> that we don't really want to engage with on the streets of Berlin. So we had to leave. We had to literally leave. And this woman was, I'm sure like, what kind of doofus is over here <laughs> giving me the nod and then running away. So you're anti-sex work. Um, at that moment, I was not interested. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Oh, uh, man. So, yeah, anyway, if you're, if you're traveling internationally, don't take for granted that uh, eye contact and nodding and saying hello is... Yeah, yeah, is it's positive. important to understand the customs of, <laughs> of where you're visiting. <laughs> um, so so he's, he's got a pretty serious absinthe habit, and he's, he's going totally off the rails. Mm. When his mom finds out about this, she's like, <laughs> okay sorry okay fine come back and get married yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he does he comes back home he marries sarah at her family home of swanhurst hmm which is not swan and noah okay not swan and noah but rich people fucking love swan <laughs> they do <laughs> so much they take their honeymoon in paris uh and of course they're you know 19th century wealthy idiots so mm-hmm. this is going to be like a three-month honeymoon <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's pretty common um, for that that set. Mm-hmm. So they're in Paris, but after a few weeks, Sarah's mother and her two sisters come to join them. Oh, see, this honeymoon. is <laughs> yeah. No, this this is not okay. I mean, Oliver's not going to be the hero of our story, but in mm-hmm. this one one right. instance, yeah, you know, it's it's hard not to be on his side <laughs> because he did not like that. Mm-hmm. Did Amy's mom come along on your honeymoon? So it, it's funny you mention it. My uh, <laughs> not not on ours, but my my parents, who you will be shocked to know, are no longer married to each other. Um, <laughs> when my parents are married, they went on a honeymoon to, of course, the Lake of the Ozarks, and <laughs> <laughs> ah, the jewel of Central Missouri, and uh, and. and uh, they drove my uncle down in the truck with them because he was going fishing down there with some friends and needed a ride. <laughs> and I asked my mom about this, you know, years later after I found out about this, I'm like, this wasn't just like a colossal red flag. She said, well, I was young and I was in love and I was like, you know, 19 years old or whatever. Didn't seem like a big deal to me. My brother, down. <laughs> uh, oh, my brother needs to come come on our honeymoon. But just for the drive down to the Lake of the Ozarks, he's going somewhere else when we get down there. We'll have to ask, did he go somewhere else when they got down there? I don't there? think so. I think he probably <laughs> stayed like a different bedroom of the cabin. Oh, uh, man. So. <laughs> it's amazing they were together long enough to make two children. I, it's it's I, wild. It's really st- good on Good wild. on them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, mm. So it's that sort of situation. Cool. Oliver does not like this, of course. Mm-hmm. He took to frequenting gambling houses and brothels, drinking absinthe to escape the situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a quote. Now, this had a pretty, the absinthe has a pretty bad effect on his general temperament. Like, mm-hmm. The more he drinks, the worse <laughs> of a person he becomes. Because <laughs> sometimes this is how hallucinogens work. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, a whole lot of people are like, I really need some hallucinogens to just like put me in the right space just like to even for, i just gotta even for out driving <laughs> please <laughs> is... give me a little bit of x i will even out it's gonna be cool <laughs> i tell you, i can't parallel park unless i have a lot of ketamine in me then <laughs> it's weird this like is exactly why go ahead i just all see right. all the geometry in my head i i i can't <laughs> screw it up now <laughs> this is uh, this is 100 percent of the reason why elon was like Oh, the Tesla will auto park because yeah. he's so ramped up on ketamine. He's like, I can't park this car. Like the car needs to parallel park for me. <laughs> um, so you get it. So that's not helping him be a good person. And mm-hmm. then he becomes abusive towards Sarah um, physically and emotionally. And this is leaving her, among other things, terrified. Mm-hmm. Right. And <laughs> Oliver found her terror uh, very distasteful. Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> he's, um, so he does what any any normal, sane, definitely sober person does, and he abandons her on their honeymoon hmm. in Paris. In Paris, mm-hmm. and he starts traveling around France with a dancer. <laughs> I need a honeymoon from this honeymoon. You know what I mean? It's just it's getting a little too real here. Oh, and uh, another little uh, fun treat. A little bit after this, Sarah learns she's pregnant with Oliver's child. Oh. Uh. So poor Sarah is in I, I th- I, the worst possible position. They divorce. Oliver was then forbidden by Sarah from ever seeing his daughter. Hmm. Okay. His name is uh, Nat- Natika. 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 And... Oliver, who actually is now giving very strong Elon vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, oh, you don't want me to see her? Guess what? I disown her. She's not my daughter. So she tells everyone he's not his, she's not his daughter. He does disown her. He disinherits her. For all his money. Um, and that was fine with Sarah, mm-hmm. who uh, was very happy at this point to be, to be rid of Oliver. Um, when she was old enough to understand such things, this was also fine with, uh, with Natika. And you'll be happy to know both Sarah and Natika were, uh, they had, they did just fine about Oliver. Sarah remarried, uh, a person who, as far as I can tell, was, uh, quite nice mm-hmm. and wealthy. And then Natika also married someone who, as far as I can tell, quite nice, very wealthy. 
they did they did all right what are the odds i, I mean like seriously <laughs> they what? found the two people yeah. and uh good for them and they and they they deserved it uh so even though that first marriage only lasted a couple months uh oliver he didn't let it get him down you know he's he's mm-hmm. he's ready to go a lot of, a lot of fish in that sea mm-hmm. <laughs> he lives the bachelor life then for for quite a while for for quite a few years uh, eventually, he does go to work for Daddy August at the banking company, August Belmont and Company. Mm. But in 1890, Oliver's father dies. And by the way, I'll note that, like, even though this is prime time, the Civil War never came up in the research once. So this is how mm. rich people, I guess, are living. Yeah. They're just not even concerning themselves <laughs> with <laughs> the shit. So 1890... Oliver's father dies, and so Oliver, therefore, inherits just an absolute fortune. He did have some siblings, um, but August was so wealthy. I mean, he's mm-hmm. basically like a lawyer for the Rothschild empire. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's a lot of cash. Uh, so Oliver has a ton of money. He's living the bachelor lifestyle still. He decides the first thing he wants to do with his money is build a fuck palace. <laughs> Sorry, this is summer house. <laughs> summer house. Sorry, summer house. <laughs> It's about a summer house. Uh, he's like quick, like quickly painting over the fuck palace sign. Like, no, 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 no. My mom's coming. No, no. I didn't, I before Zillow gets here, have take, two sides. Before, before they get here to take the photos, I got to take the the, 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 the bound down yeah. sign off the wind, off the off the bed. No, no, no. Uh, let me ask you. Okay, so he chooses the location. Now, if you, if let's say it's you, it's eighteen ninety. Mm-hmm. You're super wealthy. Mm-hmm um you're building (laughs) you're building pound town Mm -hmm. where do you put it i'm in new york city you live i don't that's a good question uh let's say yes let's say yes new york city i probably put it in portland maine (laughs) (laughs) the sexiest city in new england i I asked the wrong person (laughs) for sure (laughs) absolutely um, I'll give you a hint. This is your one of your, if not your least favorite states of all time. Ooh, uh, least favorite state. Gosh, I mean, Vermont kind of sucks, but now you've mentioned this on this podcast as uh, a state you fucking hate, and I don't know why. Rhode Island, <laughs> no, yes. not Rhode Island. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> terrible choice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he chooses Newport, Rhode Island. <sighs> Now, I didn't really look Newport up on a map. I don't know if we saw that or not on our... It's like it's like the other thing. city in Rhode Island. Oh, it's... It's, it's not on... Providence. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't go there. And it is uh, basically... An, it's it's basically an island, on an island. Hmm, okay. In Rhode Island. So it will not... Supr- it's the island part of Rhode Island. So it will not surprise you to learn that at this point, there were just tons of rich people buying and building gigantic fucking houses on uh, in Newport. So he chooses that as well. He hires an architect named Richard Morris Hunt. And you may not be familiar with that name. I also was not. Are you familiar with the name? Uh, no, I, I, he's, not, he's not one of my, uh, my known architects. Name all of your known architects. Um, <laughs> the guy that did the waterfall house. Uh-huh, and his name was? The yeah him um mm. and uh mm. the guy that, one of the most i uh, probably the most famous architect of all time right yeah him did that. uh, that's that's the yeah. one and yeah. you and you know and you know his name right yeah 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 robert lewis stevenson that's not <laughs> okay that's fine um and you know saarinen the guy that designed the arch there there's two so you know one one right. <laughs> and it's not frank lloyd wright <laughs> frank it's lloyd wright the guy who designed the arch Damn it. I thought it was Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they both have three names. Um, but no, so those two. Frank Lloyd okay. Wright, Eno Saarinen, that's it. Okay, so uh, this was different than that, so you don't know was, his name. It was the third guy. <laughs> it's the third guy. <laughs> but you are familiar with his work. He designed, among many other things, the Biltmore Estate. Oh, <gasps> I was going to guess the Biltmore Architect. That Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. I, I seriously was. <laughs> he also designed the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. Well, I mean, 
It's not like a house. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I could design a fucking yeah. pedestal for a statue. I got an idea. We're going to pour a lot of concrete to put the statue on. All right. Thank you very All much. Right. Can I you write the check out? Yeah. Let me say this. All right. Go, go with me here. Uh. Block. Huh? 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 Right. But a small block won't work. Right. That's why we're just going to do a big, big block. Big fucking block. Big. <laughs> <laughs> um and a lot of other big stuff too but yeah mm -hmm. built more built more state i think is is um <laughs> is mm -hmm. so he's he's a big deal especially at this time mm -hmm. contemporary uh, times mm -hmm. um and another fun fact wham he was born in brattleboro vermont oh this time i'm only gonna offer three i tag points because you're not very good at this game <laughs> do you remember uh where we've heard brattleboro vermont before Ooh. Oh, Brattleboro, Vermont. I don't. I really don't. Boy, it's like you're not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> the wiki has nothing on Vermont. I'll have to, I'll have to go back and double check it. Uh, the Brattleboro, Vermont uh, factored into the Brattleboro Road Brattleboro Road Treat, Brattleboro Retreat episode. Which is the one where uh, the people at the um, mental health institution built the oh, giant tower. To jump like, off this of. will yeah. definitely make people feel pretty good. <laughs> and then they were surprised to learn people were actually just jumping off of it a lot. <laughs> and that was uh, that was Brattleboro. So anyway, so that's where it's So Oliver, so he hires Hunt, and Hunt comes in with some uh, some pretty you know obviously some pretty great ideas on how to design this mansion. Mm -hmm. Oliver looks at the plans and says, actually, I'll be designing the mansion. You just build it. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> like quote, this. Hunt was hesitant with the design of Belcourt, uh, which is what we'll uh, end up calling the mansion. But he concentrated on his guiding principle that it was his client's money he was spending. <laughs> <laughs> If you could just put on the absinthe bottle long enough to draw a straight line, that's all I need you to do. That's the amount all. of money he must have spent on the most famous architect in America at yeah. this time, just to tell him, <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. I've done this already. <laughs> Astounding. So they build the house according to Oliver's uh, plans. The first floor of the house was mostly stables. <laughs> That's really what you want below all of the rooms of your house. Horses. <laughs> lots and lots of horses. You know, you may know this. Normally, stables are, like, separate from the house. <laughs> really far away from the house. <laughs> Quite Because far. they're awful. Just terrible. Not here. No, no. The <laughs> first floor was almost exclusively horse stables. Oh. <laughs> In the master bedroom, the walls were painted with scenes depicting the life of a nobleman. Hmm. This guy's so insufferable. <laughs> Again, big Elon vibes. The overall design of the house is mainly uh, French Renaissance and Gothic. Oh. Which I don't think are two styles. Those don't go together real well. No. Together. <laughs> Uh, the French Renaissance is, is wasn't like a response to Gothic architecture, essentially. I think like, I think yeah. it was it, it was intentionally the opposite of Gothic architecture, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Uh, I want this room to be both red and blue. I don't really know how you're going to make that work, <laughs> but I want both. Not alternating, just both. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also some Italian uh, influence in there, some German, sure. some English. Mm -hmm. Weird place. Would you like to see some photos? I would love to. I sounds like this sounds, you like, might. sounds like the Graceland. Uh, <laughs> well, I was thinking, Rhode Island. I uh, I don't know if we talked about this before or not, but I, my parents were out visiting. We went to Monticello to see Thomas Jefferson's home, mm -hmm. which was a really cool experience. But the house itself is so weird, and you walk through, and it's like none of this makes sense. Mm. Individually, the pieces are all super interesting, and like oh, oh this was, but it's like nothing matches, nothing works together. It's all very weird. Like in his bedroom, mm. he just, there's, you walk into the room and there are these three gigantic circles just cut into the wall. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what, why are there holes in this wall? And it's because he put his closet in the wall, but high up. So he had to take a ladder into the wall to go to his closet. And the circles are there cut into the wall so that some light would come into the room. And that's the only light source. And it's like, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> it's all so weird. 
<laughs> anyway, so this is picture of the house. Ooh, I like this. I I I, I love the the houses that have a, a courtyard in the middle. I love yes. that. Yes, love a house with a courtyard in the middle for mm-hmm. sure. That's where your kids can go play, and you don't have to worry about anything. Mm-hmm. They it, just it, go to the it yard. Does, it, it, he, he did choose to have the uh, the funeral home awning on the front door. I don't like that. <laughs> not a good choice there. I'm not sure that was original to the yeah. to the design, but. <laughs> Oh man. So that's uh that's the house, obviously from the outside. So this is one of the rooms, which I guess <laughs> Oh wow, beautiful vaulted ceiling. It's a gray vaulted ceiling. Mm-hmm. Very great. Got the the French flag hanging mm-hmm. there for reasons, uh probably. <laughs> um here's a different room that is way different. Okay, sure. This is this <laughs> just like like they just rob the Vatican and grab whatever that wasn't nailed down <laughs> and put it in some in this like room. fucking German weird ass, very yeah. dark wood uh, closet, giant this closet. A, but... This was my favorite scene from Inglorious Bastards when they lit this room on fire. <laughs> yeah. Favorite scene. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here's another room. Okay, which is maybe more French Gilded Age. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's got some weird Versailles themes to it with like the gold wallpaper and gold mm-hmm. tables mm-hmm. lots of flourishes on the furniture mm-hmm. uh and also the blood red uh carpet and chairs which is mm-hmm. very versailles uh at the the end stages mm-hmm. also this one column <laughs> right <laughs> like, I, okay <laughs> and then here's a picture of one of the carriage houses that was part of the stables uh, hmm. and again this is the first floor of the living area right <laughs> that is the house no, I do get it. You know, and nowadays people do like the garage attached to the house. Very convenient. <laughs> yes, that's true. I get that's it. That's true. Very but now, forward thinking. But imagine if your car just shit 70 pounds <laughs> of poop every single day. At some point, you wouldn't keep the car in the basement anymore. You'd be like, this No, I would keep it in the neighbor's uh, driveway for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so that's the house. It's great. Uh, I mean, beautiful and full of, uh, full of stuff. <laughs> that is fine. And that's the house. Now, construction cost $3.2 million in 1894, Whew. which is about $117 million today. Man. <laughs> Oliver named the mansion Belcourt, uh, presumably because it's where Oliver Belmont would hold court or whatever. I'm sure. I'm guessing, but yeah. that feels that feels right to me. This is mm-hmm. flat. It's just so attracted to this computer uh belcourt was set to open with a huge fucking dumb festival of rich people (laughs) in in july of 1894 but unfortunately i mean just before like days before he left new york for newport to open the house oliver got mugged okay he got mugged so hard that he had to go to the hospital for several weeks oh goodness the mugger, uh, they caught him. His name was, let me see here. Is this right? Karma. Hmm. Right? Interesting. Yes, Karma <laughs> mugged him. <laughs> so he's in the hospital for a while. His health is generally not great because he's... <laughs> yeah, because of the absence primarily. So yeah. fucking absent. <laughs> so even though he's in his 30s, he's not healthy. And um He's got the absinthe, probably some arsenic, because that, that was a cool thing to just drink at the time. And it takes him almost a full year to fully recover. Wow. Oof. So he can't actually open Belcourt until September 2nd, 1895. He's like opening the summer house on Labor Day. Yeah. <laughs> but he does open it, mm-hmm. and he has a huge party for all, uh, all his rich idiot friends where he gave out $7,000 worth of party favors. Oh, wow. Which is today about $262,000. <laughs> so he wasn't like going down to Dollar Tree and getting all the stupid shit for your kid's birthday no, party. No, we live very yeah. different lives. No, he was not. <laughs> he was not. Don't forget to take your bag of stuff you're going to throw away when you get home. <laughs> there you go. And Here's... then two days later, your kids will say, where's that um, blow toy? Where's the... <laughs> Where's that, where's that bag of pencils and the annoying whistle? Yeah, I threw all that shit away. I'm so sorry. Nobody <laughs> wants that. There's an eraser shaped like an eraser. <laughs> I need it. 
Um, so has a huge, huge blowout bash, but it's September. <laughs> there goes my pen. So <laughs> as soon as he opens the house, he closes it again. Hmm. Um, so he's not like a planner. Right. Um, actually kind of, kind of dumb and bad at stuff as we've, yeah. as we've covered. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a few months later, in January of 1896, Oliver remarries. Mm. This time, he marries a woman named Alva Vanderbilt. Oh, I've heard of this. I've heard of this person. You've heard of Alva Vanderbilt? I've heard of Vanderbilt. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. We Does... Listen, don't pay yourself yeah. on the back. We've all heard of the Vanderbilts. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, Alva Vanderbilt, she is not a Vanderbilt by birth. She is actually the ex-wife of Oliver's very good uh, former friend, <laughs> William Vanderbilt, oh. who is part of the Vanderbilt clan. Right. They're very close. They're very good friends. Mm -hmm. And then Oliver marries his ex-wife. Hmm. Well, they are um, no longer very close friends at that point. Uh, because part of the reason they got divorced, but uh, possibly, mm -hmm. is because uh, Alva and Oliver were, um, it was pretty clear that they were into each other from years back. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show you this photo of Alva for what will, I think, when you see it become mm -hmm. very obvious reasons. Here is Alva. Oh, okay. Are, is, <laughs> are the birds attacking her? I'm, it's, I'm hard yeah. it's hard to know. It's hard to know. I think she's snapping one bird's neck and the other one she's pinning to the floor. I don't really, I don't know. What... It's hard to know if this is the picture that was the inspiration for the birds or yeah. for the three amigos. <laughs> the hat is, it, it's a very three amigos hat. hat. I will give you that. Very three, a very three amigos hat. Um... <laughs> So <laughs> even even the backdrop of the photo appears to be like a huge flock of birds attacking someone else. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this is a, a very intense photo. This is a yep. lot to take in. So you would like that. So that's all of a, so, so they get married. Now this causes a bit of a, a social scandal, but they don't care. Oliver, he's, he's deep in love with Alva and vice versa. They're into each other in such a big way that as a wedding present, Oliver gifts Alva the brand new Belcourt Castle. Oh, he gives her the house. Interesting. How do you give someone a house? Like, are you expected to also be able to to visit the house? Uh, you know? Well, they're married. So I think it's like the assumption is like, you'll own this. And I assume that uh, it's cool if I'm here. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess unclear on the rules of marriage at this point. Like, if, it's if not I, a bad question. If I, if it were Amy's birthday, and mm -hmm. I was like, hey, this kind of lines up with the day that we're going to buy our house. How about if I just get you this house for your birthday? You know what she's going to say? Get out of my house. <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't count as a birthday present. That's what she's going to say. What do you mean say. it doesn't count as a birthday present? Because here's what we do. You would sign. You wouldn't. Your name would not be on the mortgage. Oh, see, this is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, that's, yeah. the burden then is on her. Huh? <laughs> All right. Let's say, okay, new, I, new scenario. Uh-huh. You've paid, you've, you're buying the house fully in cash. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have a mortgage. Right. And you say, my name is not going on the deed to this house. It's just mm -hmm. yours. Right. It's a risky play. Oh yeah. For you. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Very risky. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and you know, knowing Oliver's history with wives, I'm sure yeah. it'll be fine. So he gives her the, the mansion. Um, she commenced renovations almost immediately. <laughs> oh, and the brand new house. <laughs> the brand new house yeah. that he designed himself. Um, so she's like, this, thank you so much. Love yeah. this house. It yeah. is garbage. Yeah, <laughs> we he has to great bones. It. He has great bones. <laughs> <laughs> so she starts renovating, but Oliver doesn't care. He's, he's happy. He's rich. He's in love. Life is so good. And um, eventually he feels a little like listless. Mm. Maybe you should like get a job. Maybe, yeah, yeah. But do it's any, like, it, yeah, do, do any boats need like a midshipman or <laughs> need a really low-ranking, yeah. uh, poorly trained, real dipshit officer? <laughs> I'm your guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not going to be that. He just, he just need. Gosh, gosh, what could it be? He just needs something that, like, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're like, okay, when you're super rich, mm -hmm. kind of dumb, no work ethic, mm -hmm. 
God, if there's any, what, God, what kind of job? Personally, personally, mm-hmm. personally, mm-hmm. I would buy a social media company. That's what I would do if I, if, yeah. You're, you're not too far off. <laughs> Does he buy a newspaper? <laughs> we say, yeah, he becomes a politician. Ah, uh, okay, well, fair enough. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In 1900, he is elected to Congress, representing New York's 13th district. And here, for your viewing pleasure, is a pretty cool lapel pin that he had made of himself. Mm. Oliver H.P. Belmont for Congress. He just fucking looks insufferable, doesn't he? He, he, <laughs> he looks like he is, yeah, not, not, a, not a care in the world, including for you. That, yeah. that, that's the look I, I yeah. get from that right there. Yeah, absolutely. So he goes to Congress and he serves one term. <laughs> and also grows that. bored with, with congressional work. He was not a candidate for renomination in 1902. <laughs> but for all of Oliver's faults, and we've, we've talked about several, mm. uh, I will say this. Uh, in, while he was in Congress, he did advocate for inher- <clears throat> sorry, inheritance tax. Oh. Which, I mean, feels like, on the one hand, Mm-hmm. Very surprising and positive. On the other hand, it's like, right. well, he already got his inheritance. Like, he's yeah. not going to get tax. <laughs> he, has, he has no children at this point, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> he advocates for inheritance tax, uh, public ownership of public works, mm. and the power of the people to veto any law by Congress. So, right. I mean, very, I guess yeah. we would say progressive. I would say so. Yeah. Ordering on, like, actual communism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, which is surprising. So, you know, good for him. Uh, but then he leaves and he goes back to doing basically nothing. So he did run a weekly paper called The Verdict for a while. So, yes, he does get into newspapers. <laughs> um, but at this point, of course, like everyone is in a fucking vanity paper. Uh, so mostly he dedica- dedicates his time to renovating and improving Belcourt to his wife's wishes, which um, he wouldn't have he would have to do. If he had let Richard Hunt just fucking sure. design the house. <laughs> <laughs> now they hold some wonderful parties there. For example, in 1907, they hold a dinner party for Consul, a chimpanzee. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to answer some of your questions here in a second. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here are some of the details of that dinner. And this comes from the New York Times. Headline, <clears throat> Consul, chimpanzee. <laughs> Mr. Belmont's guest breakfasts in a dignified manner at Belcourt, the Newport Villa, refuses a black cigar, but smokes a cigarette with evident enjoyment. <laughs> Many society people are present. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I've got some quotes from the story. Do you do you wanna do you wanna I mean, in before we get into that? I'm still I mean, is is this is this a special chimpanzee? Is this smoking maybe what sets him apart? I'm 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 kind of confused. It's hard to say. Yeah. Um, I think he was a circus chimpanzee. Okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe a star of stage and screen as well. Or... Uh, possibly. He was great in blackface. Really, really <laughs> brought it home. I don't know. So here's some, some quotes from the, <laughs> the New York Times article. Consul began his perusal of the bill of fare. It included bouillon, roast chicken, sirloin steak with accompanying dishes, tea, champagne, and coffee. The chimpanzee thoroughly enjoyed the meal, showing an especial fondness for the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so they're letting this this chimpanzee get ripped. <laughs> get ripped shit. Smoke cigarettes at the dinner table. I mean, I think it's kind of his mansion now is what it sounds like to me. Like, what, <laughs> I think that's right. I think. What do you do if this chimpanzee is like, I'm not leaving. This is the plot of Dunstan Checks In, I think. It absolutely is. Yep. And Dunstan like <laughs> eats the guy's face off, and you're like, okay, well, this is Dunstan's hotel now. Well, it's, yeah. I guess we all have to eat faces off. Uh, one other quote from that story: when, when at the close of the meal, a black cigar was offered him, he bit off the end and, taking one taste of the weed, threw it away. He was consoled, however, with a cigarette, which he lighted and smoked with very evident enjoyment. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so things are going great i this. don't know how much absinthe i would have to drink to <laughs> give a chimpanzee a lighter in my home oh my I mean, god like that's 
<clears throat> Absolutely not. This guy is definitely the RFK Jr. of his day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then dumps the chimpanzee's body on the New Jersey Turnpike <laughs> at four in the morning. And we'll tell everyone in 10 years. Mm. Oh, man. So uh, so it's going well on, uh, until J June 10th, 1908, when Oliver Belmont dies oh. following... <laughs> <laughs> he dies following complications from a delayed appendectomy. Mm. So this dipshit's appendix burst. Uh, they try to rush him to the hospital, and he's like, well, not so fast. Uh, yeah. I've got time. I want to finish some things up yeah. first. <laughs> <clears throat> Turns out uh, he did not have time. Mm. And then he died. <laughs> So anyway, obviously Alva owns the mansion. She has control of the mansion. So she she has it until her death in 1933. But they never had children. And obviously he uh, disowned his one actual child. Mm -hmm. So when she dies, Belcourt passes to Oliver's older brother, hmm. Perry. Perry? Perry? <laughs> Perry? Perry, you have a mansion? <laughs> also a pretty good seller, by the way, is the, uh, <laughs> the, the home movie inspired chair uh perry's 80 years old uh -huh. He's... <laughs> exactly what he wants a oh yeah fucking headache out in Rhode responsibility yeah. for sure <laughs> now he doesn't want the house but he never liked alva so he is interested in changing that <laughs> <laughs> to soil her memory he immediately sells everything in the house that he identifies as hers <laughs> 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 um, but by 1940, Perry's officially kind of sick of, of owning Belcourt and dealing with it. So he decides to sell it and he starts talking with a man named George Waterman. Now, Waterman really wants to buy Belcourt because he wants to turn it into an antique auto museum. What? <laughs> I, I, I've given you all the information I have. <laughs> I'm looking for a home <laughs> whose entire first floor still kind of smells like shit, but is primed for 200 exotic imported cars. <laughs> now, I know there are multiple levels of this house, and right. I will not be able to bring cars up to them. Mm -hmm. We'll figure that out later. Right. We'll, we'll put stuff up there. All of the car staff <laughs> will stay in those upper floors. So Perry's like, sure, man, I don't mm -hmm. care. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he, he says he will sell it to Waterman, but there's a condition. Um, and that condition is that Waterman has to restore the castle to Hunt's original plans. Mm, very nice. Yeah. Which is, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Finally, yeah. someone in the family is, 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 <laughs> someone family realizes this whole family's fucked up. Please just <laughs> do away with all these awful decisions. Yeah. Uh, Waterman agrees. And for agreeing, he's gonna he, he's gonna buy uh, Belcourt for a fucking song. So mm -hmm. Perry, you know, he's not looking to make money. He wants to just offload it, but he he's trying to to, to restore the house to its original mm -hmm. potential. <clears throat> also, Perry is just rich as fuck, so he doesn't you know yeah. he doesn't care. Uh, so he only asks Waterman for a thousand dollars. Oof, which Was that today in, yeah, in today's yep. dollars that's like twenty two thousand. Okay. Which is could, nothing for this house. I could swing that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, for that. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, five percent down on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. I think so. Can we do a thirty year? Uh, <laughs> but twenty thousand for this giant mansion is really good. So Warren's like, hell yeah, I'll do that. So he buys Belcourt mm -hmm. for a thousand dollars, and he starts renovations. Uh, he gets as far as restoring. He restores the third floor roof. And he removes an addition that Alva had made to the courtyard mm -hmm. before learning that the zoning committee would not allow him to make the building into an antique auto <laughs> museum. A thousand dollars down the drain. Ah! So, so he immediately sells it to a man named Edward Dunn. Now, Edward Dunn never lives there. He just owns it. Um, and during World War II, he rents the stables to the military. Mm. Now, they don't use horses much right uh, yeah especially in, not on in newport in, yeah for, for world war ii <laughs> um but it's uh, they use it for repairing equipment because it's you know mm -hmm. giant open first floor space but in 1954 dunn sells 
uh, Belcourt to Lewis and Elaine Lorillard. Lorillard. Terrible name. Lorillard. Lorillard. Yeah. You can keep saying it, but it's not going to get better. No. no. <laughs> Terrible name, but they do have that tobacco money. And they want to use Belcourt as the home of the Newport Jazz Festival. Oh. Now, Newport Jazz Festival is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. These are the folks who started that festival way back when. And they want to use Belcourt as the home for that. Now, I will say that's not a good idea because this is a giant indoor building. <laughs> and Jazz Festival is famously outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, like uh, so much space. I mean, a nice, a nice backdrop. Mm -hmm. but I don't, what are you doing in this space? So they buy it. They host the festival there for a year or two, but the neighbors, <laughs> the neighbors start to complain because they are all wealthy, uh, ass hats also. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't like sounds. A lot of these songs sound like they're about us. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. So the neighbors uh, are very vocal about their uh, displeasure here. So eventually, it's not long before uh, before they're like, "Fuck it, we'll just we'll sell." It. Plus, the castle itself at this point in time is basically it's been uninhabited for two decades. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's a wreck. Yeah. Um. So after just two years, uh, the Lorillards are like, <laughs> "Fuck it," they sell Belcourt <laughs> to the Tinney family. Now the Tinney family. They officially changed the name of the building from Belcourt to Belcourt Castle. And I will note, I don't know how you change the name of a house. I don't know how you name a house officially. I don't know how you change the name of a house officially. I think you just chisel into the into the that... in, into the, the cornerstone down there, right? Is that like it? that's yeah. That's all it is. Do all houses have cornerstones? Mine does. Does it have yeah. like a stone stone? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What have you chiseled into your cornerstone? Um uh, no fat chicks. <laughs> emails about that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, everyone, don't email me. Patrick doesn't have access to the email. Only I do. And I, I, I also don't. don't have a cornerstone in my house. Okay. <laughs> but also, we do have a motto. Which is... Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Tinny family. Oh, they change the name. So they they change the name and they fill it with their own collection of antiques and reproductions. Mm. So they're bringing a lot of uh, genuinely very valuable stuff into the house. Now this is where um, some of the things you saw in the earlier photos actually come to play, including that there was a big chandelier. Which you mm. may remember mm -hmm. holds thirteen thousand crystal prisms <laughs> and one hundred and five lights. Oh. <laughs> like at least two are always burned out. Fix those two. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Just change these. <laughs> they bring in Persian rugs, French royal art, Oriental art. Again, not my term. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> religious artifacts, all kinds of shit. And uh, unlike previous owners, the Tinnies actually move in. Mm. So they treat the house as a museum, but also a museum where they live. <laughs> And they start doing tours. Now, the Tinnies own it for a long time. They own it from 1954 until the 2000s. In 2008, Belcourt was put up for sale by Harley Tinney, uh, one of the daughters, for $7.2 million. Mm. Now, I will remind you that in mm -hmm. present day money, this thing costs more than $100 million to build. Right. And she's like, please, someone take this for $7 million. <laughs> A year later, she reduces the price to five point one million. Mm. The next year, down to three point nine million. Mm. There are still no buyers, so she takes off the market. Then she relists the whole thing as two separate land parcels: one with the house, one without. Mm -hmm. Still, no one is interested. And the reason Harley was so eager to sell, and the reason everyone else in the world was not ready to buy was because Harley had been very public about the fact the mansion was incredibly haunted. <laughs> and in fact, in 2010, while she was trying to sell the house, Harley published a book called the ghosts of Belcourt castle, <laughs> which is a big strategic error. Oh I yeah. Think. Yeah. And as, as well as her sequel, uh, the correct foundation 
of Belfort <laughs> Castle. The Book bed three, bug infestation. The many floods. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, complicated <laughs> foreclosure status of Belcourt <laughs> Mansion. The weird zoning issues of Belcourt <laughs> Castle. It's a ten book series, and mm. it's just, it's just, it's, it's riveting, but not, mm. not a great idea. Yeah. Um, this book details uh, quite a few ghosts, actually. So there are two, there are two Gothic chairs in the grand ballroom, which um, we saw in one of the photos. Mm. They are now, as of now, they're roped off. So if you go on a tour, you cannot get close to them. But mm -hmm. there was a time when you could just walk right up to them. You could touch them. And everyone who did touch them felt that the surface was as cold as ice. Ooh. One woman on a tour of the castle tried to sit in one of the chairs and was thrown across the room. <laughs> Uh, there's also a 15th century suit of armor that moves and screams. Mm, I like and that. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I have a photo of that suit of armor if you'd like mm -hmm. to see it. Uh, let's do this. There you go. Oh, that looks like a screaming one. Yeah, for sure. That's for definitely sure. a screaming one. Yeah. Yeah. I can't explain mm -hmm. why, but something about it is... Um... It is. It is the fact that it doesn't have a spot for your face. The or face hand. or hand, yeah. The the face is just like a piece of of solid, you know, sheet metal. Yeah. There's no like eye holes or ear anything. It's just literally you hop in here and there's no there's no uh, 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 sensory organs pointing out at that point. No, the only escape is mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, this is it. It gives real strong Resident Evil vibes. Mm -hmm. For me and i don't know why it's like pyramid head from resident evil it in really ways is. i can't really explain <laughs> but i feel deeply um so that's haunted obviously <laughs> at one point the tinnies bought a wooden sculpture of a monk which was another antique for the collection mm -hmm. and soon afterward they started seeing the apparition of the actual monk mm. he first appeared in harley's bedroom Religious people, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. He also appears in the chapel, busying himself with preparations for mass, and sometimes he wanders down the grand staircase. Mm. Uh, Alva Belmont herself haunts the second floor gallery, dressed in a ball gown. Mm. Which is a fine way to be remembered. Mm -hmm. Now, Harley's husband, Donald, has seen the ghosts of two girls dancing in that same ballroom. And a British soldier in dress uniform wanders through the house sometimes. This one uh, might stem from the fact that uh, Belcourt was apparently uh, <laughs> inadvertently built over land that was once a graveyard <laughs> from the revolution. The bodies were moved, but um, <laughs> it, 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 they always say that. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we did move the bodies. We told $5,000. We yeah. moved so many bodies. <laughs> Five bucks a body, uh, doing it all day long. It all got moved. <laughs> yeah, every single one. We checked for sure, for sure. Uh, we took yeah, a big they... stick and we poked it down and we come up and we licked it and nope, <laughs> and then the go over and we poke it down again and we pick it up. Nope, none of the All day long. Anyway, 50 bucks, please. Uh, <laughs> I licked it. God. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, I mentioned the oriental artifacts. Well, one ghost attached to those pieces is a samurai warrior who moves around that particular room, Ooh. which is uh terrifying but also mm. pretty fucking cool. Very Tom Cruise, that's <laughs> very it's, Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, um, let's see, we went so so long without any last samurai references, and now it's mm -hmm. two, two in one night. It's a shame. Hey, I'll tell you what, Ken Watanabe, huh? What a mm -hmm. oof, what an actor. Made it. That guy. That guy is something. Uh anyway, where are we here? One night, Donald Timmy starts having a conversation with someone that, that Harley couldn't see. It was, quote, as though I was listening to one side of a telephone conversation. Her husband said, Yes, Tom, of course, Tom, I will. The next day, they learned their friend Tom Wilson had died during the night. Ooh. Uh, 
Uh, Oliver Belmont, the man himself, he is sometimes seen, but uh, he's more often heard shouting, get out, <laughs> to people who <laughs> tour the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which is the I, energy i think i would want to bring absolutely to. <laughs> absolutely i would wake up at the crack of dawn i'd get like a mile jog and i'd come back to the house and i'd just scream at everyone to get the fuck out until closing <laughs> he's never been more relatable than he is as he goes. <laughs> for sure <laughs> now eventually harley does sell belcourt it's purchased by uh carolyn rafalian for for 3.6 million dollars um she uses it as a tour house art gallery and event space Ooh. carolyn is trying to distance the house from its reputation of being haunted uh however that uh, that attempt is not being helped by the fact that visitors are still seeing the ghosts <laughs> everywhere <laughs> And they keep telling her, and she keeps saying it's not haunted. And they keep saying, "Oh, yeah, it fucking is." <laughs> uh, and this week we uh, we're gonna go out on a fun fact. Wham! Oof. In 1999, the Tinnies rented out the mansion to a group who held a no underwear party, <laughs> which is yes, indeed, exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, that is the story of Belcourt Mansion. Any uh, questions or I mean, concerns? I had some question about the no underwear party, but then I was thinking how many parties have I been to that were no underwear parties that, you know, I was the only one aware that it was a no underwear <laughs> yeah, party. Yeah, so any, any party could be no, no underwear party if, uh, if you want it to be. <laughs> um, and that is Belcourt Mansion. What a what a story, huh? Mm. This is one that was really fun because I, I I researched the story and I was like, this is interesting. I'm taking notes, and then it was it was kind of a rare situation where like the more I read on different sites, it's like different sites are giving more details about Oliver's life mm -hmm. and the ghosts that are all like, oh, this site didn't mention any of like this wild shit, like the abuse yeah. of the his his first wife and the fact that he left her and disowned his daughter and yeah. like went on a tour of France with uh, a dancer. Um, so it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was like a blooming onion, the mm -hmm. blooming onion of stories. It just opens itself and there are so many layers. <laughs> and that was something. Uh, any final thoughts on this story? Oh man, just a... Uh... Yeah, may, maybe giving me half a reason to visit Rhode Island, not a full reason. I just, I, I will never understand why you hate yeah. Rhode Island so much. It's so small. It, I know, but uh, but you're so small. And Providence just sucks. So it's. I liked it a lot. I thought it was mm. a great drive. We drove through it. It was small, and fine. No, never gonna go. There back. are so many worse states. There are okay. so many yeah. worse states. But this one concentrates its badness in like a really small spot. We didn't even spend, we spent like an hour in the state. We spent enough time in that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here before Patrick roids out and <laughs> just becomes you know, Red Hulk. Um, so I will say all the notes this week on Is This a Ghost are taken by me, Clayton Smith. All the funny jokes are from Patrick Dean. Our audio editor is Jeremy Montoya. Our video editor is Jen Swanson. Our social media manager, I guess, is still Kai Valonis. I'll be honest, I have not heard from her in months uh, <laughs> and it's been several weeks since she's uh since she's posted so i i hope uh hope everything's good with kai um and uh that's uh my my wish for tonight is that kai is doing okay the kai is not our next subject i wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna say that but i guess we should send the podcast huh <clears throat>